Well, welcome back to Schmatz Outdoors, everyone. Um, it's chilly out here again today. Uh, it's 15 degrees according to the thermometer. It's pretty much stayed steady all morning here. So I don't know, it's not supposed to go up all that much. We're supposed to have uh, light south winds today, but we got a little bit of snow flurry going on. I don't know if you guys could tell, but it's kind of, you know, not accumulating by any means, but it's gonna be more of a nuisance today than anything. Um, if it snows while I'm out on the line, uh, just seeing sets, seeing it, you know, coyote sets in particular. So, yeah, so there's that. And it's supposed to kind of chance of flurries all day today or most of the morning here anyway, which is when I'll be running my line. And then again tomorrow. So, tomorrow won't matter. We're pulling the whole line. So, uh, you know, I don't need to see them ahead of time until I get right to them. So, yeah, I don't really have too much for you guys this morning. I didn't really do much with the truck last night or anything. Um, we're just ready to get out there, I guess. We got, uh, I decided we're gonna leave all the boxes. So the weasel boxes and mink boxes, I'm gonna have plenty of room for, I think I'm only gonna pull seven of them tomorrow because the three on our land, the weasel boxes I'm gonna leave. So yeah, I'm only gonna have seven boxes and basically like two totes of traps or a tote for all the coyote traps and a uh, milk crate to throw all the raccoon traps in is about all we're gonna have in there. So, cause I won't need to remake any sets. I'll have a one five gallon pail in there, which will have kind of my pull kit, which will be my trapping hammer, my little rope, um, a screwdriver and the cable cutter is about all that's gonna be in there. So. So yeah, a pail and a couple totes is all that's gonna be in the truck. So I should have plenty of room to uh, pick up the boxes tomorrow. Hey, that one day might make all the difference to make a, net, a catch or not, so. Yeah, so I don't think we're pulling nothing today or pulling any sets. So we'll be running the line as normal and yeah, tomorrow we'll be pulling the, the line, so. As usual, I kind of hate the thought of that, but I'm sort of ready. My, my body is beat up. I'm getting ready to be done. And then like I said, some of the work really is beginning then because I still have quite a bit of fleshing to do. I got all the coyotes, um, all the raccoons, all the skunks, you know, be all basically to do still. So a couple beavers. Yeah, anyway, we'll worry about that after this weekend. Like I said, I. I try not to do a lot of uh, fur work, not that I can't or shouldn't be doing it. I try to do, not do a lot of the fur work during the actual season when I'm running. Like I said, skin it, freeze it, and I can spend all winter putting up fur, so. All right, as a few snowflakes fall around me here, I think we're gonna hop in the hot rod here and get out on the line. All right, guys, so we're <clears throat> just getting going. I got four coyote sets checked, you know, kind of that little whoop here. And I'm down by our CRP grass here, you know, just a chunk of grass. Got my weasel box. I just use this pole as kind of a location guy for it, but. There we go. We got ourselves a shrew in there, partially ate. I mean, the whole back is just full of poop back there. So I think I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna pick up this box and I'm gonna go down probably this way a ways, like maybe a hundred feet down here and I'm gonna set it back up. And hopefully maybe I can get the shrews to leave it alone long enough that a guy might be able to actually catch a weasel in there. See so yeah, like how I said, it's just once they find it, it seems like it's just nonstop. Obviously I caught the one and they ate on him. So, I mean, obviously there's more here. I could probably leave this here all winter and keep catching shrews one after the other, but do I want to get rid of the shrews? Yes, I would love to, you know, I don't really, I don't know what they really are doing beneficial to our CRP grass out here, but I don't want them in my weasel box. I want to catch a weasel here. So like I said, we're going to get that guy out of there. We're going to pick up the box and we're going to move down here a ways. And the market, I'll just put a uh, gray fence post next to it. So. I could see it if it does snow and blow over the top of it. So, all right, made a catch again. 
dumb shrews. All right, we'll get this guy moved and get moved on. All right, we, uh, we're two easel boxes down from the last one. So I moved the one, I have one more down that same piece of grass and then I have, we have another chunk of CRP. So it's kind of a ditch runs down and then it winds out once it gets down there. So I just got this box so I can see it from the road and I can see it set off. Oh, I got almost no bait in here. The shrew's been active, active in here. It, it wasn't set off yesterday because I actually walked you know, part way down the hill yesterday to, uh, so I could see it, but, hmm, I don't know what I should do with it, to be honest with you, but yeah, we got ourselves a shrew there, it's partially or mostly eight already, my whole, looks like a whole beaver wig is completely eight, but you see all the poop and everything in the back back there, like, stinking shrews, like I said, you're never going to catch a weasel if you got to, Shrew's eating all your bait in there, so we're gonna rebait this here. I don't know if I'm gonna leave it set right here or what I should do with it, but I can't see it very good from the road here, so we have to do something. But well, all right, guys, um, got something more to show you than a shrew in a weasel box. Uh, as you can see behind me, we got a farmyard here. Uh, basically what we have is a fence line runs you know for quite a ways and then we got a block of woods basically this whole area back here is all woods the landowner here told me that they're getting all kinds of trail cam pictures of raccoons down in the woods back here so i have three sets of raccoon sets around the yard and i normally catch raccoons in this yard every year none of them has been messed with like the balls knocked off other maybe one time a deer had kicked my trap over because you could see in the frost where the deer had walked right up to it and then you could kind of see where like the trap went off and it must have spooked him and then he run off but other than that nothing's messed with the sets in the yard here so it's like you know yeah they're down in the woods maybe but i'm not trapping down in the woods they don't want me down in there especially during deer season so but what we got here, I guess I kind of spoiled the surprise, but we got ourselves a great big raccoon here. You know, he's in that, uh, might, might be fortin' with 25 pounder, probably 4XL raccoon, kind of yellow colored, but you know, the, can't do much about that, but he is well for the way it looks. He is just a fluff ball. Um, again, what we got is just this edge of this field here, and this is a coyote set. Uh, pipe dream set here and I actually have a second set right here just a standard dirt hole set right there and nothing's messed with either one of these two sets except for the one that this raccoon's in a deer had stepped in this a you know, week ago or so maybe just a little more than that it was set off um, looked, again looked like a deer had stepped in it so I had remade it or whatever but I don't know, glad to have a beautiful big raccoon. Definitely not what I was expecting to catch because it's like 15 degrees this morning. Or, you know, and it, that's probably about what it was most of the night because it was about that last night when I went to bed. So, surprised the big old raccoons out walking around in this kind of weather, but we'll take him. He'll be riding home with me. Uh, since I have this set and it's still working, nothing's messed with that. I'm actually just going to pull this set today. Um, to me, it ain't worth remaking it for one night, so, because I'll be pulling the whole line tomorrow. So, yeah, since I already have, I did bring my bag back here. I thought, well, if the deer had set this one off or something messed with that, I'd remake them both. But since that set's working and is perfectly fine, we're just going to pull this set today and have one less to check tomorrow. But like I said, we still got one working right there. So, yeah, all right, we'll get this guy, uh, dispatched out of there and thrown in the pickup and like I said the pipe probably froze in the ground by now so it might be tricky getting it out of there but nice big raccoon glad to glad and surprised to see a raccoon just as cold as it is typically the raccoons don't move in my area anyway here so yeah a little surprised that out of the catches and make today that this is what it ended up being so but I'll take it not skunked again today you know 
one animal a day that's all i'm looking for just not to get skunked each day so you know and bring home a little bit of fur in the in the truck with me so all right well uh get this guy taken care of get this trap pulled and we'll be on our way all right everyone we're most of the way through the main line we only got a handful of sets left to check but we made ourselves a catch again here <laughs> it, I, I don't know it's kind of a fu funny thing to me anyway but what we got here is you know this bigger slew here um, up over the hill I have a coyote set um, I caught a few muskrats in here the otter were in this slew a couple years ago or last year and the end the year before but right here we got ourselves a catch so I had my set there the first time around but I had some misses and whatever there and then I moved it over here I've caught two coyotes in this set already and now today we got a nice little red fox quite a bit smaller I think than the last one the last one was a nice size male but this one looks quite a quite a bit smaller but it's kind of funny I just come up over the hill here and Boy, you can't miss that. He wasn't even moving. He was just laying there. I'm like, oh, I know what we got down there. So I don't know. It's it's funny to me, honestly, that I go 22 checks before I catch the first fox, and now I catch two in two days. So I don't know. I said this one's a little smaller than the other one, but glad to have him. We're going to take him home, give him a free ride back to the farm, and... Got a little work ahead of me today. I got a nice big raccoon and we got ourselves a nice little fox. So, yeah, it's just kind of funny to me that how how things can go on the line. You know, I can't catch a fox all season now in two and two days. So, the only thing that does sort of tell me, and I mean, it's not always true, but maybe I got the coyote numbers thinned down a little bit in this area. You know, I've caught three just right here now. You know, and one more over the hill, that's four here. And then I, up here where these steel bins are, uh, that's where that big feedlot is. I've caught two more up there. That's a mile from here. So, yeah, I've caught six within a mile right here. You know, gives a little more room for the fox to run around if they're in coyotes chasing them and killing them. So, yeah, excited to have him. Like I said, well, uh, I'm going to remake this set because I got the one over the hill down there. And I feel like, I mean, this spot is worth it. And I only have one trap here, you know, put some gusto on here, which is what's here and let my wind blow out over this field here and hopefully bring the animals across, which is what I'm assuming is happening here. I mean, they may be running inside this pasture here. Today, the wind is out of the south. So, you know, he might've been coming along, but this is a ways out from the fence for him to be, you know, like sent checking the fence line, but. And the reason why, part of the reason why I had it here, so I had it over here a little closer to the fence, but I want to make sure my animal can't get to the fence, right? So when I was looking for a new spot to re-put this set, like over in here was okay, but there was really no good like flat spot to put my trap or like decent spot to make my set, I didn't think. And right here, there was kind of a dirt mound here. The two coyotes really dug it up and this rock was my backer here. But yeah, it's just, this was seemed like a little better spot to put my trap with the idea that my scent's mowing across this line and it's gonna pull them over here anyway. But, all right, like I said, nice little fox. He's got kind of a, I don't know, it's maybe not, but he's got like black feet, which is normal, but then he's got like a white streak on the front of his leg there, which is kind of odd looking. But like I said, this one's quite a bit smaller than the one I had yesterday, but either way we're gonna give him a ride back to the farm and glad to have him like i said i only got a few more sets on the main line to check here and we'll get this guy out of here set remade quick and it shouldn't take too much to get this set remade and we'll be on our way all right everyone well a little bit of a surprising day out on the line to be quite honest with you you know but if you'd have told me this is what I was going to catch today, I would have called you a liar, honestly. I mean, the chances of catching one or either one or both of these together was pretty darn slim, it seemed like, you know, with the way my line's been running. So, 
Yeah, uh, yeah, good day on the line. I just, I pulled that one coyote set, the one that I had this raccoon caught in. So I could have remade that set. Um, you know, I have another set right there. So if you think about it, I have to go there tomorrow to pull the other set anyway. So I could have remade this set, you know, cause I gotta go there anyway to pull that other one. Or you can look at the way I looked at it. I have a nice clean set. It's made no catches. It's there, still working, everything like that. If it wouldn't have been working, I'd honestly remade both sets. Um, but since that other trap was still working, the deer hadn't set it off all that, you know, I figured it isn't worth resetting that trap. There is a cost associated with resetting any trap. Um, you know, you got bait, you got lure, you got urine. Uh, if you use urine, and those where I caught that raccoon are sets I actually don't have urine on them because the deer like to walk by there and I've kind of found that urine tends to attract deer. Um, the smell of it, the uh, salts in it, I, I don't know. There's lots of theories as to why, but it seems like, you know, the deer like urine. So, or, you know, investigate it. Whether they like it or not, they investigate it. More so than like a skunky base lure or a chunk of meat in a hole. Um, the red fox, on the other hand, that set's been kind of a top producer for me. Um, it's supposed to stay cold. Again, it's like 15 degrees out here right now supposed to stay that way most of the day and then you know kind of all the way through the night the way it sounds it's supposed to stay pretty even that is conducive to canines running around it's cold they're going to be hungry they're going to be moving trying to find food so i remade that set again i have to drive back there anyway and that those two sets are like maybe two miles just to check those two sets two miles there and two miles back so if I had pulled the one with the fox, I'd have, I would have pulled the other one. I would not have left one set down there. So it just, it made sense to remake that set where the other one didn't because there's a clean set right there already. With that said, I probably have, should have been adding a second set right there where I caught the fox anyway. After I caught maybe, you know, once I pulled the line the first time, when I put the line back and I caught a coyote there, I should have probably moved over and added a second set there. I've been better at doing that, you know, in the last couple years than I have, but I still probably, it's hard to know because you catch one animal there, it's like, well, that doesn't really, isn't really a trend that there's a lot of animals there. But again, like, you know, how many is too many? So you catch three coyotes in there and then you add this other set. Well, I've only caught three coyotes there. So it, it's tough to know when I should be adding a second set there. That one might be a spot, you know, like in the upcoming years, I trap the same spot there every year. Maybe start with two traps there right from the get go, you know, cause I did add a couple pull outs there early on, you know, and really I caught three coyotes and a fox. Plus I had three pull outs in that location. So, you know, I could have caught seven animals there. None of the animals that I've caught there have had missing toes or anything like that or foot damage. So I don't believe I caught ones that were already caught there, but, and I'm pretty sure the first two were raccoons that pulled out, but all right. Anyway, um, I don't think I really got too much to get ready for tomorrow. Um, I won't be taking my coyote bag. Uh, this is my coyote bag, my raccoon pail, the two dispatch poles will take with me. Um, in here, I'm going to take my hammer and I'm gonna take my rope. You know, so in case it, I have trouble finding a set, we're gonna have the rope, hammer, cable cutters. That's gonna be my tools of the trade on the line tomorrow. Uh, we'll throw those in a five gallon pail just so they're easy to carry. Um, Otherwise, and then I do have my pull bar in here in case I do have to use that. And I have a wood block up here. Um, yeah, right here. I got a two by four that I use with that pull bar if I need it. I don't know. I've, I've gotten smarter or lazier or both. Last year, because the ground was rock hard, I didn't even attempt to pull any trap, any of the stakes. I literally pulled until I, you know, just kind of set the 
plates on the bottom if they weren't already set and then I cut the cables off and you know what when I pulled the line the first time I basically did the same thing I actually pulled a, a couple of them and there are a couple on my line that I do not want to leave there they're in spots where you know people mow or different things like that I do not want to leave a cable stake there at all so I will pull a couple of them so I do need my bar for a couple spots otherwise most of them it's going to be pull them you know until you set the plate and get as much of the cable as I can and cut it off as low as I can um, for coyote sets for raccoon sets I'm either going to pull the entire stake which I'll try to do most places or I'll just open my quick link on my uh, trap and I'll leave the cable in the ground with the loop there and I have found them year after year like a couple spots and I'll reuse them for a couple years and then after that I kind of you know worry about them the cable rusting and everything else so then I'll put a new one in there but so yeah uh, dog proofs most of the time will be open quick links I will pull a few of those coyote traps most of the time it's going to be just cutting the cable and I will pull, end up pulling a few of those Mink box, weasel box, those are pretty simple. You just open them up, set the traps off, um, dump the bait out. I don't need to bring the bait home. Um, we'll feed whatever animals happen to come by there and set the box in. And like I said, I do have plenty of room. I have seven boxes I'm going to pull tomorrow. I got plenty of room in here to get them in here. So um, anyway, let's get to our catches here and then we'll let you guys go. <sighs> nice fox like i said it's quite a bit smaller than the one yesterday again doesn't have the gray but the other one had you know a big big spot of the gray but he has it don't get me wrong but it's not nearly as pronounced and he's got fuzzy on the sides where that other one was like you know the whole side was all that kind of shorter coarser hair nice fox nonetheless let's see here i think it's a female little female um, the other one was a big male. I, I would say it's a pup from this year, just looking at the size of it. I'd be surprised if it was adult. Um, and I did notice kind of it's got like this black on the feet, but it's got like the white just doesn't look right. Like look at how far down the white goes on that foot. Most of the time they're black like that all the way up or up a ways to the knees. So I don't know, it just caught me off guard a little bit the way the coloration of the feet are on that guy, but I don't know. Glad to have him. You know, have it caught one all season, and then I end up catching two on the 22nd and 23rd checks. So, um, yeah, just surprising. Honestly, just that's the only word I can really use for it. It's just surprising. Um, I, I mentioned it in yesterday's video it just I was wondering if I was even gonna catch a fox this season you know I'd have been okay if I didn't honestly it's just kind of nice nice for me to know that one there is fox around to actually you know that I can catch one and then two that I'm actually skilled enough to catch them and three I do like to kind of have that checklist of all the animals that I have in my area you know and I like to check them off the only one I didn't get this year is that otter but the otter to me I, I mentioned every year is like a one in a million animals so it's not surprising that I didn't catch the otter I literally seen zero otter sign zero otters this year the last few years and I that I've caught one I've actually had otters seen otters you know knew that there was otters around this year I did not see any sign you know crossovers toilets uh, tracks in the snow I've seen none of that so and I've talked to a couple other people that you know live down more where all those sloughs are at and they haven't seen any all summer either and normally people will tell me oh they seen them in this zoo or they seen them in that zoo the few people I've talked to not one person has told me they've seen otter this year so I don't know if something happened to the otter or they just moved to a different sloughs where people aren't seeing them driving by them whatever but and then we got the uh, the big catch of the day so this guy's got just as big a surprise as this guy to me. So if it, typically if it's under freezing, under 32 degrees Fahrenheit, I do not catch raccoons. It, it just, I usually do not. There are, I'll have like one or two exceptions a year and this is the exception. So like I said, it was like low teens all night last night and it's like 15 now. 
So to catch a raccoon on a day like that, surprising. And then it's kind of on top of that is the numbers of raccoons must be way down this year because Again, either I'm not a very good trapper or something's happened and I'm not catching them in the normal spots. But this is only the ninth raccoon for me this year. I had like 32 or 33 last year. So either I put that big a dent in them last year that they're just the numbers were way down this year. Qu quick note, ninth raccoon, he is the eighth male that I've caught. I only had one female this whole whole season. All of them have been males. So I don't know if that means anything population wise. Um, kind of had the same thing going on with coyotes too, but kind of fluffing back up. I had them, I, again, I lay them on their back. So then while they're riding around in my truck, so they kind of rigger just like this, makes them real easy to open up and cut around the legs and cut down around the vent and all that. So I, I purposely weigh them on their backs in my truck while I'm driving around. And then they kind of, you know, shape the way I need them to be when I go to skin them. Does it really matter? You know, if they're laying on the side like this, it's just kind of a pain in the butt to get them opened up like this, even this fox, to get his legs spread apart enough to get, you know, cut the opening cuts and all that in there. But big raccoon, I did weigh him. Weighed right on 27 pounds. Even though I figured he was like 25 and I mentioned that I believe when I was you know when he was in the trap there I don't know after I picked him up and was carrying him out of there. I'm like God, I think he's over 25 pounds, but weighed right at 27 pounds I didn't film it or take a picture of it or anything. You just have to take my word for it, but You know, he's he's a good sized raccoon He's well furred. I mean thick thick furred. He looks a little rough again just because he was laying on this checkerboard pattern, but a little yellow colored, but he's big raccoon. He's like 4XL, something like that. You know, might even go five. I'm not sure. You know, he's just big, big raccoon for this area or for any area really. But again, kind of a surprise. So cold weather typically don't catch them. And I haven't been catching many raccoons this year to catch him. And then to catch two fox two days in a row, just kind of leaves this uh, surprise catch. So all right um we're gonna slice and dice these two i actually didn't put up the fox from yesterday but i am going to put him up today i have him in my uh my entryway i'll just show you that so again this entryway is not heated or anything so what i do is i just take them in a garbage bag and i roll them up you know as tight as i can squeeze all the air out and just keep them in there I was either going to put him up today, which I'm going to do, or I'm going to freeze him today. So I, I could have froze him yesterday, but I thought, well, if I have time today, we're going to try and put him up. Uh, and then there is another beaver there that is fleshed. I fleshed him the other day. We're going to get that beaver on the board tonight too. So, but yeah, it was just, so I store them out there. Like right now, they might even be froze or fairly close to froze in there. I wouldn't leave them for a week like that, but a day or two, they're fine. Like I said, I they basically just overnight, I left them there. Um, like I said, I just, I'll leave them there occasionally, you know, in the thing, and then I take care of them within a day or two. If I'm not, if I don't get to them, then I just throw them in the freezer. Um, I don't want to leave them there for a week. I feel like they might spoil, you know, and like, a fox will dry out they don't have much fat or meat on them on the hide anyway so you got to be real careful with them like drying so i made sure brand new garbage bag so there's no holes in it squeeze it down squeeze all the air out i can you know i said for like one night here um i'm pulling the line tomorrow and then you know i won't have time to put up fur tomorrow night so it was either put him up today or i'll get him froze today so but yeah, I think two fox and this raccoon are gonna, I'll get them all fleshed and on boards. I have the time today, it's chilly out. I don't really have many other projects around here I need to get done anyway. And then we're just gonna kind of get a few things ready. Like I said, I'll get a pail for my truck and get the uh, gear ready for pulling the line tomorrow. And yeah, it's kind of, it's a bummer, honestly. Like I, I hate it every year that I, you know, I feel like I'm in a groove right now. I'm at least making a few catches every day, especially on the landline. 
the colder weather, I think, will kick the coyotes into high gear. And I feel like if I could weave them for a few days, I could probably pick up a few more coyotes. But their weather is supposed to stay pretty temperate, like high around 30, lows in around the 10 mark every night for like the next week. So the fact that the weather's good and I still could be going, it's kind of a bummer. I, you know, it kind of puts a pit in my stomach that I got to pull the line. But again, I just only have so much vacation, you know, and my body's beat up. I, I'm so, I'm kind of torn because I hate pulling the line. It just, you know, I go there all the work to get it out there and maintaining it and all that. To pull it is just kind of like a waste of all that energy to put everything there. But on the second, on the other hand, my body is telling me, you know, you're beat up. You just, you, it's time. It's just time. But I guess with that said, I think that's all I really got for you today. We'll see you guys out on the line tomorrow.